Hey everybody, welcome back, or shall I say welcome to some and welcome back to others. OMG y'all, it has been like 10 months since I've been back on YouTube. I can't even believe it's been that long, but I have abandoned my channel for like 10 whole months. Like this is ridiculous. I don't know how you guys can take me seriously as a content creator when I keep dipping out on y'all and I keep making all these welcome back videos. <laughs> this is so effing annoying. If it were me, I'd have been like, girl, I'll do this. <laughs> I have, I feel like so much to share with y'all because I've been gone A for so long and B, there's just so much I want to catch y'all up on that um, I actually did not wind up recording with good reason. So that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. For those of you who actually follow me on Instagram or, or Instagram and Facebook, because I don't think I've really been on Twitter like that lately, um, I have actually posted uh, recently that my husband and I are expecting. We're 20 weeks along, but by the time this video gets published, it'll be, in during, it'll be at the end of the 21st week. So by the time you see this video, I'll be at week 21 going into week 22. I'm going to put a picture right here and show you guys what I look like with my belly. <laughs> so you might have seen these pictures pop up on Instagram. This is basically what your girl's looking like these days. And she is waddling around like a little penguin, but that's okay. And not only am I gonna show you the pictures, but I figure since we're all here together, I might as well show you my belly right now. So here's the babe. Week 20, going into week 21. That's not a joke. Yeah, let me tell you something. My back is killing me just off, just from doing that. My back is really killing me. We are very excited about it, of course. Goes without saying. We are super stoked. Took us a little while to um, to get to this point, but we just couldn't be happier. We have been trying for a little while, and uh, we did have some setbacks that we really weren't expecting. Life threw a wrench up in that bitch. Y'all know that in any of my previous videos, I have done a lot of like product reviews for nutritional supplements. I've done meal preps, workout videos, and tips to stay motivated for the most part. So now that we are expecting, uh, the content is going to, did I just spit? Like the, and that thing went way far. Like, I don't know if y'all saw that, but it was like, it went far. <laughs> that was unintentional. Due to my being pregnant, uh, the content's going to change just a bit. It's still, you know, I'm still going to do like the the healthy stuff, you know, like the meal preps and, you know, the motivational videos and those kinds of things to really just keep you um, on point with like sticking to your goals and, you know, just educational but informational and like interesting videos that will show you guys like certain healthy diets and stuff like that to stick to. Um, whether you're pregnant or not, but this is just coming from a pregnant lady. So I do want to share those things with you. So I said all of that to say that I may not be doing, uh, supplement reviews necessarily. Um, I might do supplement reviews in terms of on the pregnancy end, but as it pertains to, you know, intense training, muscle building, that kind of stuff. I'm definitely not doing any of those right now. I would think that that would go without question, but just in case that comes up, I want to make it very clear that that is not what I'm on. I'm not on anything except prenatal vitamins. So, um, you know, I just don't want you guys to look forward to videos like that in the near future because that just won't happen. So if it's something that I decide to do in the future, I will definitely let you guys know. But for right now, this is just where I'm at. I'm focused on making sure I'm good and I am doing what I need to do to ensure that our baby is healthy and vibrant and, you know, all that stuff. I guess this comes my uh, shameless plug of you guys subscribing to my channel. And uh, just make sure that when you are subscribing to this channel, do not hit subscribe and then forget to hit the bell next to it. Because once you hit subscribe, that's not enough. You have to hit that bell notification. You have to hit the bell because when you hit that bell, that's going to notify you anytime I post a new video. So as the schedule goes, it'll be new videos every Friday afternoon. So you can either try to remember that yourself, you can put it in your cell phone if you'd like, or you can just hit the bell notification and YouTube will notify you. The last video I filmed, it was uh, prior to the surgery and I had an abdominal myomectomy. Excuse me. So I had about, excuse me, 
Golly, I'm so burpy today. I'm sorry, y'all. But anyway, I had some major, major fibroids that uh, were bothering me. And they caused me a lot of pain, not just on a monthly basis, like on a womanly monthly basis, but I'm talking about like every single day I had something going on. And so it wasn't just the periods that I was having a problem with. It was just also when I was working out, I was experiencing some issues um, abdominally. And I was um, sort of charged with having to locate someone about this. So I didn't know if I needed to go to like, like a, I, I think it's a gastroenterologist, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, y'all. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure. But I was like, I just, I need to find out. I need to get to the bottom of this. Like, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. So a girlfriend of mine recommended a, um, oh my gosh, my brain, a gynecologist. Why didn't I remember that? But she recommended a gynecologist to me. I went to go check him out a few weeks later. He was amazing. And I was like, okay, I want to stick with this guy because he's cool. Like, why not? So I wound up doing all the consultations with him. I went to an initial consulta consultation. I told him all of the issues that I was having. And I said, especially when I'm working out, that's when it seems like my abs are on fire. Like I'll be working out just fine. If I do sit-ups, leg lifts, anything that like activates either my upper, lower abs, whatever the situation may be, it's like I can only do so many reps before my stomach spasms. And it's just like, Boom, boom, like, and it's just like fire. I feel like there's something inside of me that is growing and protruding and it just doesn't feel normal. So I was kind of looking at him afterwards and he was like, <laughs> okay, let's check this out. So he was probably checking me out for about 10 seconds, okay? I mean, I had my feet in the stirrups and everything. He was like, he was in there for about 10 or 11 seconds. He was like, oh, you got fibroids. I was like, damn it. Because I knew he was going to say that. Like something told me he's going to tell me that I have fibroids and that's going to suck. So I said, okay, well, what do we, what do we do? What, you know, where do we go from here? And so he said, well, basically you need surgery. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm not really ready for that, but it is what it is. So I wound up, um, having, um, May 20th of last year, I wound up going into the hospital uh, for the surgery, which is an abdominal myomectomy, which is a very common surgery um, for women, especially middle age uh, women who are in childbearing stages. Um, and from my understanding, it tends to happen more so with African-American women. It just hits them more aggressively than any other race. And doctors are still not really sure where uh, fibroids actually originate from. But um, there are certain things that they instruct against, um, you know, partaking in so much, you know, like you can't really have too many refined sugars, don't drink too much alcohol, you know, kind of stuff like that. But that's another thing for another time. I'm not going to get into that. But um, I did wind up going in for my surgery. Unfortunately, there was a situation that um, I wound up being a worst case scenario because I was given a... Um, it was a, it was pain medication, um, it was pain narcotic, and it is oxycodone. And so there are probably a ton of people out there who are very familiar with it. However, I did not realize that at the time, I didn't realize that my, my, my system was sensitive to it. I can't speak today. I didn't realize that my system was sensitive to it, and so I wound up um, accidentally overdosing on it. Um, and it basically caused me to shut down and tap out for a little while. Uh, <laughs> and um, I pretty much, I, I overdosed on it and until I pretty much knocked myself out. And again, no one knew, no one, not even the hospital, the doctor, no one knew that I was sensitive or and or allergic to it until this happened. So now we were in a situation where um, I knocked out, when I woke up, I was in ICU. And I actually had a, uh, I had a pump, so they had been pumping my stomach overnight, and I had all these tubes in my nose and going down my throat, and I woke up, and my only thought was, we, I'm in a completely different room than I was before, so where am I? So I had to get someone to actually explain to me what happened, because I was like, y'all, what, what, what the crap? So at this time, 
My husband's in the room. I don't know if my mom was in the room at the time because there were so many people coming in and out. But, you know, my girlfriends were coming in. Everybody was there. And so I finally just had to just say, like, listen, I, I'm confused. Where am I? Why do I have this thing down my stomach? What happened? Is this normal? And they were like, no, you're in ICU. And I'm like, what the crap am I doing in ICU? They finally broke everything down to me. They let me know what was going on. So I wound up being in ICU roughly for about... I think about two and a half days, something like that. It's still a little fuzzy, but the surgery ideally was only supposed to be, um, I think like a couple of hours and maybe I was supposed to stay in the hospital two days. By the time I actually left the hospital, I was in the hospital for roughly about a week, a work week. Um, and that also included uh, me having to get a blood transfusion because of all times, <laughs> my period comes on it came on um, the night that I got my surgery. So I got all these fibroids out. I lost a little bit of blood in the surgery. And then I wound up losing even more blood because I wound up getting my period the same night. Which I was expecting to get. But damn. I mean, give a girl a break. So I'm in ICU. And ab ab just abdomen on fire. I can't move. I can't do anything. And now I've lost all this blood. So in the middle of blood transfusion, I'm shaking, looking crazy as hell and having to have like six layers of blankets. It feel the temperature just feel, I feel like I can't get the room hot enough. It was an absolute utter mess. I'm telling you, it was a mess. And, um, after <laughs> y'all, this is, this is just so crazy. And it's, it's even crazy for me to go over it again because I can't believe that I went through that situation. It was literally like it was an outer body experience. That's exactly what I, in my mind, that is what I associate this with because it was just like, it wasn't me. Like I was in ICU and I was like, I don't understand how people can be in ICU, you know, like this. Cause this is, I mean, clearly they, they need the medical attention, but it's just like, this is so depressing. I can't do anything for myself. I mean, every time I have to go to the bathroom, I have to call a nurse. You know, I mean, I listen, I can't, I can't even wipe my own ass. You know what I'm saying? I had to have a nurse give me a bath. I got one bath the whole week I was there. I didn't brush my teeth because I couldn't even do anything. Like, literally, all I could do was I was only good for laying down and sleeping. That was it. And good luck getting any sleep in the hospital. But it was just like, bro, I even remember one time I called a nurse and I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. And they were like, okay, we'll send somebody up. So 20 minutes later, nobody's there. So I called again. I'm like, hey, excuse me. I called 20 minutes ago. And I know you guys are busy, but um, I got to go to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> send somebody. Someone quick, please, hurry. So all of a sudden, they send this dude in. And I say dude because he doesn't even, this guy wasn't even in scrubs. Okay, he had that little whatever that thing is that the doctors wear around their neck. And he was like, let me check your blood pressure. I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, I got to pee. Like, why are we doing this right now? You can't check my blood pressure when I'm out. Every time I go to the bathroom, let me check your blood pressure. Let me check your blood pressure. Let me check your blood pressure. I was like, I'm going to pee in this bed. Okay, straight up. So hurry up and do what you need to do so I can go to the bathroom already. Like, why are you trying my life? This is not right. So finally, <laughs> I finally, a nurse walks in and I'm like, I'm glad you walked in because I wasn't going to let that mother ever take me to the bathroom. He doesn't even look like he works here. He looks like he just came off the street and was like, had the little stethoscope and was like, let me check your blood pressure. And I'm like, last time I checked, you don't check blood people's blood pressure with a stethoscope. Like, <laughs> what? Why do they do that? I feel like I'm being punked. So... Anyway, long story short, I said all of that to say um, it has been one hell of a challenge during that time period. I was able to get out and I was able to take about three weeks to fully recover from that. I was able to take that time to really sit and just take care of myself um, and, and, and just kind of take a break from life for a little bit. We did actually intend on filming the process because I wanted to be able to share with everyone what my experience was and, you know, if you ever have to go through this, ladies, what to expect. Um, but we didn't actually count on me going into ICU. And 
So yeah, we it, things wound up being a little funky. Now at the time, I couldn't laugh about it. As a matter of fact, physically it hurt to laugh. But now it's just like thing after thing that could happen that really could just go wrong. It kind of did. But the blessing that came out of all of this is the fact that um, about six, about seven months post-op, when it was actually safe to go ahead and conceive, we did wind up conceiving. And we wound up conceiving in the month of somewhere in December. So at the turn of this year, that's when I actually found out I was pregnant. So I took a home pregnancy test. That's how I, well, I technically found out because I didn't get my period. And um, when I didn't get it, I was like, hmm, I haven't gotten it in a while. That's happened before and I wasn't pregnant. So I was like, okay, okay, let's see what's up then. Um, so I took a pregnancy test and it was like the digital clear blue one that basically says pregnant or not pregnant. I'm like, we ain't reading the lines now. I don't have time to be like, oh, look, it really is a line. And it's not. So I was like, we just need to know yay or nay. So I was like waiting on it. And it takes like, I think a minute or a minute and a half, maybe two to populate. And so I was like, okay, okay, like, let's see what happens. I was like, watch it say pregnant, like just joking around. And that sucker was like pregnant. And I was like, damn, I was just playing. Like, what the crap? I wasn't really sure. I wasn't really sure. I was like, that's just one test. It could be a fluke. So let's take another test. I didn't take another test until the next morning. And I took it right about the same time that I took it the morning before. But this one was not a, a digital uh, test, or it wasn't the digital read. It was a line test. So I was like, all right, I'll take a line test, whatever. Took the line test. Line test said that I was pregnant-ish. So I was like, I can't read this. I took a picture. I sent it over to Farah, who was a few feet away in the bed, by the way. And I was like, does this say I'm pregnant? Does it look like it's pregnant, like a cross to you? And he said, um, yeah. I said, okay. You know, the second line was there, but it was faint. But I was told that even in the directions that even if it shows it's faint, it still means you're pregnant. So I was like, I'm not sure yet. Let's take another test. The next test was a digital read. So the digital read came up pregnant. I think it's safe to say we're pregnant. I wound up making an appointment with the gynecologist going excuse me, the OBGYN, and um, getting it verified that at the time I was actually four weeks pregnant. Um, you know, I was actually living my best life, not in the best way for a pregnant lady. So that got quit immediately. So there was no more drinking. That was just pretty much it. So, uh, but yeah, but that's pretty much where we've been. And that was it feels like ages ago, but I just feel like this pregnancy is just moving so quickly in a good way. But I'm ready for it. I'm ready to meet the baby. I'm ready to introduce my baby to the YouTube world. I will admit, going through the time that we're going through right now is not something that I expected, especially as in, in pregnancy. That's just not something that I ever thought that in our lifetime we would be going through. And it's such a unique situation, especially to the different different demographics that are being um the different demographics that are in that isn't this quarantine situation and for pregnant women i feel like it's just difficult because we have concerns just like everybody else but now we don't have concerns just for ourselves as we do for ourselves and our baby so um yeah it is becoming um it becomes a little bit more real you know as we go through this and as much as we, as pregnant women, I feel like really want to enjoy being pregnant and we want to enjoy um, a future for our, our kids and everything and our families, it's like we just have so much to think about now because now there's stuff that's brought to the table that was not a concern even two to three months ago. Like we were just doing our day to day, going to work, you know, coming home, taking care of the household, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, oh, now we got a virus we got to worry about. And I feel so terrible because my girlfriends or some of my girlfriends, like a group of us that are all pregnant at the same damn time, and they are like ahead of me, like some of them in, even in their last trimester. And I'm like, damn, like I know if I have these concerns and I am like in the middle of my second trimester, I can only imagine how you're feeling. Like this has got to suck. So 
I don't know. It's just really, really crazy. And But like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, we really are just trying to take it one day at a time. We're trying to be as clean and as careful and, as, and just practicing social distancing the best that we can because that's what we are told to do. That's what we know to do. And essentially, when you know better, you do better, ideally. So we're just sort of you know, just practicing that and we're just doing the best that we can so that way we are... You know, we're, we're, we have a better chance of getting through this and not being affected in a negative way. So, it is what it is. You know, I just hope and pray that it's something that, you know, I don't want, I don't want necessarily, it's just like, oh, the, you know, you, you guys to come on YouTube necessarily just for entertainment. I mean, obviously it's important to educate yourself and, and, um, but I think at the same time, there's so many things that we could teach ourselves, you know, um, just being a part of this platform in and of itself, I think is a really beautiful thing. But I think that as content creators too, it's important to really be charged with paying it forward and not just thinking about people coming to your channel and subscribers and this and that, because all that stuff doesn't mean anything if you're not really able to teach a person something or being able to pass on something that is important. And I would just really hope and pray that people would have that connection. You know what I mean? Like that real social connection. I'm kind of going on and on about it, but I'm really hoping and praying that this message really resonates with you as you're watching this video and that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a camera, but I'm talking to you. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm making sense. If not, I'm not. When we get out of the situation too, when we get back to our normal day-to-day -day grind and what we do, I'm really hoping that people don't forget about the situation that we just got out of and that it won't be a world just full of I'm in my device so I can't talk to you right now and that we remember to be there for one another and that we, re we remember that like during this difficult time it, you know we really we had to be together and we were struggling together and we were trying to figure all of this out together. Sometimes I have faith in humanity that we will come back from this and we will come back stronger and people won't forget. But then I always think to myself, we're in such a different place in the world. I'm just not so sure people would hold on to it as long as you might think that they would. This is something that will definitely make the history books for sure. I was actually going to go into um, something else and, you know, but I'm really not going to go into this because I feel like this has actually gone on much longer than I wanted it to, but I really didn't realize how much I missed y'all and missed being on this platform and just, and sharing with you guys until I got here. You don't even understand. I have done other videos, like plenty of other videos I've done, but it's something so special about this particular instance and where I'm coming back and I'm sharing and I'm just, I'm loving on you guys right now. And it could be because I'm pregnant and highly hormonal, but I'm not going to get sappy because I'm not going to get sappy. That's just not going to work for me. <laughs> I just want to let you guys know that um, I truly enjoyed this time. This has been absolutely amazing. I'm so excited to have shot this video because if you understood the amount of time it actually took me to get back in front of the camera, ugh, it's crazy. Um, but I'm always so super stoked to just be spending this time with you guys. Again, I'm not going to repeat myself. I know you guys got stuff to do. I got stuff to do with my damn self. So I'm gonna, up, I'm gonna get up off here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell notification next to the subscribe button so that way YouTube can notify you every single time I post a new video. I'll be posting every Friday afternoon. And um, also, you guys, don't forget to hit your girl up on social media. I've got all of my social media links down below in the comment section so you guys have my handles. You have no excuse not to connect with your girl. And if you do want to be part of an awesome community of like-minded people, consider joining my Facebook group where I share up-to-date tips on how to stay motivated and sane during this super crazy time. Also included are goodies on how to look and feel your best. So just make sure that you click that Facebook link below because I've also left that in the comment section for you. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos. If you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. That actually really helps my channel and tells YouTube that I'm kind of engaging. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Friday. Bye, y'all.